Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. Uh, where we talk about role-playing games. Now, I just want to point out, we've got another wonderful background donated by Jeff Brown, and you can sh totally check out his amazing art. Uh, but enough about that. Let's talk about RPGs. Now, we have, I'm happy to have on, a uh, first-time game designer with a Kickstarter. Well, he may not be a first-time. I think he's probably got thousands of games like most people, but this is his first Kickstarter. Uh, this is uh, Sean Gomes. How are you doing, Sean? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Thank you for having me on. Oh, well, it's, it's always a pleasure to have on uh, someone from the Great White North. I, I, it's, it's pretty snow. How's it going up there? It's finally warming up uh, after we've, we've had a pretty rough winter. We've had a pretty rough winter here in Quebec. I, I understand that you're, you're fundraising for a game called Uncharted Worlds. Now, no charts in an RPG? Have you ever played Rollmaster? What's up with that? Okay, to be fair, there might be a few charts in the book. It's not an Uncharted book. The worlds, however, have no charts on them. Um, now, Uncharted Worlds is kind of a project that I've been working on for a long while, and it's all about exploration. It's about charting those worlds. It's kind of pointless to chart a world that's already been charted before, right? Hmm. That's a conundrum. I, 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 is, that's like a bon mot or is an aphorism or I, I don't know. I'm a little lost. So uh, Uncharted Worlds is a space opera, right? Now, how, how does that work? Because you can't hear people sing in space, right? Uh, space opera is a uh, is a very general term uh, describing a sci-fi that's larger than life. Uh, the term that I use in the book actually is painted in primary colors. It's it's big. It's open. It doesn't exactly follow science exactly, but rather it's um, it's operatic in the sense that it's very dramatic. Um, you know, uh, opera in that sense, not opera and singing. How, how, this is this is a hack of apocalypse world. Is that right? Yes, yes. It started it started off actually being inspired by uh, Dungeon World, which was of course inspired by Apocalypse World and so forth and so on. You could probably do some sort of um, you know genus kind of uh, evolution kind of thing. Uh, and when I was introduced to the Apocalypse Engine. I was blown away at how it changed my perception of role-playing games in general. So because of that, I said to myself, there is really there's room for a lot of expression in this rule set. And I had just gotten off of a campaign of Traveler. Now, I don't know if you've played Traveler, but it tends to have significant amounts of math in it, especially if your character is a broker. I not a fan of math. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'm okay with math in in simple forms, but when you start cal when you start calculating interest of uh, you know and uh, projected profits, not exactly my cup of tea. I'm I'm not an, an accountant. So traveler is an influence. And so I got I gotta know though. When you say space opera, like are there ray guns? There are definitely ray guns and any other type of gun that you can imagine because. Uh, the weapon system and the uh, equipment system is keyword based. So you choose which keywords describe your weapon, and those pieces together kind of make your own unique weapon, like uh, uh, the prefixes and suffixes in games like Diablo or Borderlands, where you have a scatter laser gun. You just add those three words together, and hey, you got yourself a laser shotgun. Oh man! So I could make I could make a laser fly catcher. You could actually, yes, and you can choose how it catches flies. Whether it's a, a entangling, whether it uh, lashes, maybe. Oh, oh man! I could I could you need oh wow! This is great, Sean. So thank you, fly catchers. That's that's important. Okay. Uh, that's all. No, so this is on Kickstarter right now. Like when this episode comes out, you got a few days left. And you've already funded as of this recording. Uh, this is tape delay for those at home. But you're you're hoping to unlock some stretch goals, right? What, what are you trying to? What, what can be unlocked there? So I don't know how far we're going to be along by the time this goes live. But uh, I have uh, three major stretch goals that I really hope to get. The first one is uh, Carta Galaxia, which is 
uh, ironically, it is adding charts to the <laughs> to the uncharted world. Um, if ever you're looking for inspiration, if ever you're looking for an idea for factions or weapons, it's a booklet that just has a lot of pre-generated stuff so that you can just hit the ground running. Pick and choose what you want to use and get together with your friends and play in that world rather than spending time creating your own stuff. Um, the big one is the second stretch goal, which is uh, Far Beyond Humanity. Now, Uncharted Worlds is a human-centric kind of universe, kind of like uh, Traveler and so forth. Great. Of course, another human-centric game. Fine. Just go ahead and put out your little... Sorry, sorry. However, uh, Far Beyond Humanity it introduces rules for creating custom-designed um, alien races, uh, including frog people. Frog people are a definite possibility with uh, Far Beyond Humanity. Uh, okay, you're, course, you're getting me back, Sean. Keep going. <laughs> of course. I mean, frog people, Far Beyond Humanity, right? Yes. <laughs> so, um, Far Beyond Humanity is all of the kind of rule breaker um, archetypes and career paths, stuff like mysticism and uh, telekinetics and uh, telepaths, various alien races and mutants and robots, and all those stuff that didn't quite fit into a uh, more human-centric uh, game. And then the third, the third uh, stretch goal is a app to create characters. So and which will include, of course, all of the stuff that's included in, in Far Beyond Humanity. Oh, oh, I love apps. Is it like cheesy fries? Like, like, like the cheesy fries, or is it like a blooming onion? Or it's a, uh, a tablet app, like um, uh, for your tablets or phones or PCs. It's an application. This app sounds pretty cool, even though there are no blooming onions involved. No, that would probably be. No, I don't think... I'm trying to think how I'd include them, but no, I don't think that that would work. You can't include everything, Sean. You have to make choices. I understand it, Exactly, this. exactly. All, all right. right. Thanks for sharing with me all, all of your, your amazing Kickstarter stuff, but I've got a serious question for you. I've got a serious question. Are you ready, Sean? Okay, okay. Okay, just let me... I've been I've been getting ready for this. I, uh, okay. <clears throat> Go, all right. shoot. You said you're, you're, you're Quebecois, so you're Canadian, right? Now, what the heck is up with poutine, man? Oh, my... Oh. Poutine. Poutine is an amazing dish that is made out of regret. Because you see, you only eat it when you forget the last time that you ate it. You regret it immediately after, but while you eat it, it is melted heaven. That is the best answer about food I've heard, not on the Food Channel. <laughs> Sean, it was super. I'm super excited to have you on. You're you're a great guest. Thank you so much, and good luck with the rest of the uh, the Kickstarter for Uncharted Worlds. Thank you very much. It's it's an honor to it's an honor to be interviewed by you. Thank you very much. You just watched the Doctor Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time. Well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime. <laughs>